and welcome to the first preview show of the week where BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple is virtually alongside me as we look ahead to tomorrow night's game at Vitality Stadium. Here's what's coming up. We'll look back at last weekend and that defeat at Old Trafford. Before we move on and preview tomorrow's game against Spurs. Well, let's start back at last weekend and that 5-2 defeat to Manchester United. Chris, it, it seems a bit weird to say having conceded five goals, but there were certainly some improvements in areas, weren't there? It's funny, you have like when, when we're commentating on BBC Radio, so you have you sort of building a thread throughout the game of how you think it's gone and elements of the performance. And then you look at the score at the end and it's 5 2, and, and you're right, it's slightly strange to think you're, you're sat there trying to justify why you're thinking it's been a little bit better. But I mean, the, the general feedback we had from fans and that I've read on Twitter that people that have tweeted in and things was that, yes, it, elements of the performance were better. Um, of course, you're playing against a team currently on, in a purple patch with some absolute world class players. Of course, United have had their ups and downs over the course of the last year or two. But unfortunately, Bournemouth have caught them at a very good time. And yes, conceding nine goals in two games is nowhere near good enough. And that, won't, that defensive record won't keep you in the Premier League. But... On the back of the Newcastle performance, which had pretty much none of the elements um, that need to keep need you to keep in the Premier League, um, it was uh, better in many regards. Um, yes, of course, there are areas, of course, that can be improved on. But I think it's just given people that little bit of, you know, if Bournemouth had gone to Man United and lost sort of meekly 4-0 and, you know, people had been, well, it was all right. But I think people would be probably starting to, to lose even more heart. But I do think it's just given people a little bit of an injection and given the other results, it's needed to as well. Two home games now, and basically I would say these, these next four days coming up, two games at the Vitality Stadium, I think, this is, I think this is it. I think between now and Sunday, this is it. And I just want to talk about, at the start of the second half, you know, we've seen Bournemouth go two goals behind against Palace and, and Newcastle and not really shown much of a response, but there were two goals behind at half-time and they came out all guns blazing at the start of the second half. Yeah, and you know, well, yeah, two goals behind, but thankfully they'd scored one themselves this time and actually shown some bits, some bits and pieces going forward, which was which was good. And the great goal from junior Stanis Lassen. Again, I think if that was a, a higher profile player, not making an £80 million pound defender and then slipping one in at the near post, that would have probably got a lot more column inches than if it was just little old Bournemouth because that was a brilliant bit of skill from, from junior. And I thought he was excellent. I thought he really was. Um, and a player who looks like he's needed the minutes to get himself back. He hasn't been in the team every week. He's sort of been nursed back. And I've said many times to you and many times on the radio that Junior Stanis, that's what a player if we could keep him in the in the team week after week without sort of these niggling fitness problems. But I thought he was brilliant. Um, I thought he was, you know, the amount of space that um, he was able to exploit. And again, it comes back to a team that plays the way United play, allowing a bit of space for Bournemouth to get in behind on the counter makes makes Bournemouth's natural game so much easier than trying to break down those rigid banks of four and five that we've seen from previous opponents. And I know that's all part and parcel of it. You've got to overcome different tactical challenges every single week. But um, yeah, Junior was excellent. I thought Joshua King and Dom Solanke were much more like it. And yeah, as you say, coming out of the start of that second half, Dan June has only just come on. He's all of a sudden hit the post. Um, uh, Dom Solanke with that driving run to the edge of the box. Lewis Cook nearly scored. I mean, these things are, you know, momentous occasions. Even Lewis Cook nearly scored. And the penalty goes in. You're thinking, brilliant. You know, game back on here. Great start to the second half at 3-2. And then, bang, suddenly it's 4-2, 5-2. Um, um, the good thing is that Aaron Ramsdale made a couple of excellent saves late in the game to make sure that the score had some respectability. Um, I've, I went blue in the face on, on the radio and, and on Twitter, talking about the fact I don't blame Aaron Ramsdale for any of the goals. Apart from the free kick, I thought possibly his positioning was a, bit, a little bit questionable. Uh, but apart from that, I don't think you save any of those. And I don't buy the, the fact that if you get your hand to something, you should save it. I don't buy that at all. Um, because those, those shots from Greenwood and Martial, particularly the, the Greenwood ones, were travelling like absolute tracers. So I don't think there's anything to blame Aaron Ramsdale for there. And actually some of the saves he made probably, you know, enabled the team to come away with, you know, smidgens of, of confidence, if you like, rather than if you get done six or seven, then all of a sudden that's a pretty low place to come back from. You mentioned the confidence there and, and up until that United game in the first three three games since the football had restarted, Bournemouth had had just two shots on target across all three of those games. On on Saturday, they had three on target, seven shots overall. So as you say, there's little bits to take from that game, little bits of confidence that can hopefully get get them back into the squad ahead of the big week. 
Yeah, I mean, we're, there's an element of straw clutching here, isn't there, that we're celebrating having three shots on target. But you're right. I mean, it's much more of an attacking threat this time. A couple of wild shots off target as well. But I just thought everybody, you know, had, particularly attacking-wise, everyone seemed to have that little bit more thrust in them. They need to seem to have that little bit more of a spring in their step. Um, talk, we're talking about attacking mainly. And, of course, you're not going to win any games by keeping clean sheets specifically. You've actually got to score and be a threat at the other end. But I thought Lloyd Kelly had a great game at centre-half. Yes, of course, there were moments where you know, he got turned or he got, he got you know, done by Bruno Fernandes quite early on in the game as well. But to be slotting in there all of a sudden against that attack in your second-ever Premier League start, you know, there's big hopes for Lloyd Kelly, I think. And hopefully fans were encouraged by what they've seen from the first couple of games so far. And we'll come on to the team news a little bit later on, but it will remain to be seen whether he will be continuing at centre-half for, for this game. But yeah, I mean, attacking-wise, some, some shots on target was good. Um, and I think just, just the combinations and just the, the belief and the, um, the, the drive, if you like, just to make things happen was much more evident. And I don't, it, it makes it hard to wonder where it's been in this situation, given that, that that's what they need. They need to score goals. They need to, to make chances happen. It's, it's hard to, to wonder why it's taken these amount of games for that to reappear. Absolutely. Well, next up, we are going to turn our attention to that game at Vitality Stadium tomorrow evening. And Eddie Howe has been previewing that in this morning's pre-match press conference. Yeah, it's been a period where it's definitely been hurting. And um, Nothing's affected my my motivation to turn it around, though. I think that's the key thing. Uh, I love this club so much. Um, love every part of it. That I'm determined to do everything in my power to make sure that we maintain our Premier League status. That's the the big drive for me. But I see a lot of hurt in the dressing room. I see a lot of um, players who really do care. If you looked at our dressing room after the recent games, um, there's certainly not been a lack of a lack of those type of emotions. Um, got great professionals here. I've always maintained that and I still maintain that to this day, despite the results going against us. Um, the players are determined to try and turn it round. We still have time to do that. We still have the opportunity to do that. We scored two goals. We could have scored more. The offside flags denied us on a couple of occasions. So I'd love to think that that, that feeling that we had, that we could have come away from Old Trafford with more goals than two. Um, will re-spark that belief that we can score. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in this morning's press conference. Chris, they'll, uh, they'll have to look back and have fond memories of last year's 1-0 win and, and be hoping to reignite some of that spark tomorrow, won't they? Yeah, but I'm looking, you're looking back down the list of results and things for just little markers and little omens. I mean, yes, the Spurs game last May, last home game of the season, of course. I know lots happened in the game. The Spurs went down to nine men and Nathan Ake, of course, scored that last minute winner, which always you know, resonates pretty well when you, you beat the big six, but also in that dramatic fashion as well. Mark Travers, you know, what a game. I mean, actually just thinking about the game, I actually watched the highlights back on the... Uh, on AFCB TV, just ahead of this game, just to remind myself of that day, because it was the sort of day that does really bring a smile to your face when you think about everything that happened. And actually, let's not forget, Nathan Ake was playing central midfield that day because Bournemouth didn't have any central midfielders left, pretty much. Um, it was a bit of a patched up team. Obviously, Mark Travers was given the nodding goal, surprisingly, by Eddie, just to see what he was about. And he turned in that fantastic performance. So, yeah, I think that's the sort of game now people look back and go, whoa. Be lovely. Harry Kane didn't play that game, of course, as well, which is always always handy when he has the record that he has against Bournemouth. Although, albeit not in the last couple of times he's played Bournemouth. Um, so yeah, that that game um, is a happy memory. And also, I, I was looking back to the only time that Bournemouth have, have lost five in a row this season, and it's you know it's not the sort of record you want to um, have more than once in a season losing five in a row. But that is the current record at the moment. They went to Chelsea after losing five in a row earlier this season. Patched up team. No one gave them a prayer. Pulled off a one 0 win. So. Um, it's been quite a while since the Chelsea have lost six in a row. And I remember bringing this stat out in December when they were going to Chelsea uh, and they managed to pull a result out of the fire there. So I'm, I'm, I'm clinging to that as an omen this week, Zoe. I, I like that. I think uh, if we look at Spurs since the, the football's restarted, they've had some mixed results. They obviously had that 3-1 defeat to Sheffield United, bouncing back to that 1-0 win over Everton. So it's been a bit of a mixed bag for them, hasn't it? Yeah, they've had three out of four at home so far. And the only game they've had away was at Sheffield United, where they just didn't bother turning up, basically lost 3-1. Uh, they don't keep clean sheets away at all. I think it's one in 23 away from home in terms of clean sheets. And Bournemouth, of course, haven't had a clean sheet for, I think it's 15 games um, now. So, yeah, both teams are not so adept at keeping their goals out, particularly on the road, Jose Mourinho's side. 
Um, I think only Aston Villa, I, I'm off the top of my head here, but I think only Aston Villa have kept less clean sheets on the road than Spurs this season. Um, so, yeah, as you say, in and out. Um, Harry Kane, obviously, like a lot of the Bournemouth players, nursing his way back from an injury and trying to get into a bit of game time as well. I, I have to say, I watched 15 or 20 minutes of the Everton game earlier in the week against Spurs and switched over because I was bored to tears watching that. It wasn't a great game. Um, I know, you know, Eddie and his coaching staff will have had to sit through the whole thing. Um, but Spurs often under Mourinho, it's one of those things. Sometimes teams don't play that sparkling of football. Um, they're still in the European mix, of course. That was a very important three points for them in terms of the table. And they very much have um, tangible things to go for, like the teams that Bournemouth are still playing. Leicester to come, of course, right in the Champions League shake-up. Southampton, Everton, can they sneak into the, the European places? Southampton at the moment, you'd have to say, might potentially have a chance. But it's um, back to Spurs. Um, yeah. In and out, um, much better at home than away. I'm, I'm looking for positives here. Uh, and of course, Bournemouth have, haven't really had a whole lot against Spurs down the years. A nil-nil draw in a lunchtime kickoff back a few years ago and obviously the one-nil last season. But earlier in the season, you know, 3-2 defeat at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Harry Wilson popped up with a couple of goals. Um, but ultimately, that was a pretty comfortable day, I think, for Spurs as well. And one thing, talking of positives, Spurs, they've obviously played that game on Monday night. Bournemouth have had their game away from home on, on Saturday. Will will that extra two days come into play at all? Will that play Spurs? You know, two two games in three days is a tough ask, especially when you haven't had football for three months. Yeah, I, actually, I have to say, when I originally looked at the fixture, I didn't realise they were playing on Monday as well as Thursday. That Monday game almost snuck up on me because that, that's quite a heavy schedule um, at this stage with players. And I know Jose Mourinho has gone on record, I think we said it last week, about he thinks that minutes... Um, are better for players. The quick games are actually better to rediscover their fitness levels rather than being drained. Um, but you do see other managers um, having to rotate. You know, Arsenal last night changed a few out in terms of having to uh, a quick turnaround as well. So Tottenham have had a pretty a pretty heavy schedule. Um, I, I've looked, off the top of my head, I haven't got exact dates, but it's something like six games in, I don't know, 18 days possibly that they've got. Um, and then a clear week until the last game of the season. So they were a bit slower getting out of the traps than other people in terms of their fixture schedule. So I'm not quite sure why they've ended up with, with so many games in a short space of time. But as you say, I don't think it can be an advantage to Spurs to be turning around again so quickly. Um, whereas Bournemouth will have had a few days, <coughs> excuse me, since the United game um, to, to get themselves back together. But of course, from a Bournemouth point of view, Thursday, Sunday against two top half bigger teams, um, is, a, is a quick turnaround. And if you don't get a result in the first game, I'm sure the legs will feel that little bit heavier going into the second game. And in terms of our team, you've spoken with Eddie Howe this morning. Steve Cook obviously missed out on Saturday's game with a, a minor hand <coughs> string injury. We had David Brooks sort of come off at half-time as well. It looked like he might have might have picked up a little knock there. What, what's the latest? What did Eddie Howe have to say to you this morning? Well, the Steve Cook news is he's getting closer, which, um, you know, that's always the hard one for Eddie Howe when he throws that one out there. You never quite know how close people are because Joshua King, remember, hadn't trained and all of a sudden he started. So um, back to the old Steve Fletcher days for old supporters when Steve Fletcher's knee made him a doubt for every game, but he started every single game. Um, Chris Meppham, not such good news on him. Um, it sounds like he there, there might be a possibility of him having to have an operation, which is not great for, for him, um, I suppose, at this stage of the season. Um, if you can't be involved, you've got a few weeks to get yourself back up and running for next season. But you feel for him when he's obviously spent so long getting back and it looks like he might need a, a further a further um, sort of exploratory procedure there. So fingers crossed for Meps. Callum Wilson obviously is back this week after two games out. Um, been working very hard, bowl accounts behind the scenes. And, you know, again, if you just wanted someone to click back into their sort of goal-scoring international form, if you like, that got him in England, uh, England caps, then it's time for Callum, I think, to, to step up. Saying that, I thought Dom Solanke and Joshua King were much better, as I said earlier on, against United. But at home, uh, they're going to go two up, obviously, two up front. So it'll be, Callum is, is into any team if he's available, basically, as far as Bournemouth are concerned. Uh, David Brooks is a strange one because I do think he's, I do think he's, he's struggling from you know, the lack of football and how quick this is all coming back. Um, he, hasn't, he hasn't really influenced much so far. We've seen little five-minute bursts from him here. Didn't get into it at all at Old Trafford. He was a, he was a bit of a non-event, unfortunately. Came off at half-time. No injury issues, apparently. Um, he's fine. Um, but I think Eddie Howe does admit that David Brooks is finding it a little bit difficult to sustain it in matches. He's, he's apparently showing some great stuff on the training ground. But game time, um, there's no substitute. It's a cliche. There's no substitute for the match minutes that, that will get you back to your sharpest. So I think Bournemouth have improved every game in terms of looking a bit sharper. Um, junior 
Stanislas has improved with minutes and as we said earlier on has been a you know a, a great addition in terms of uh, what he gives you and the other thing about Junior is he's very experienced these days as well I think he's 30 so he's seen quite a lot of things and we talk about leaders on the pitch um, he's not you know he's not the not a ranter and raver Junior he's quite a quiet you know well thought sort of intelligent guy um, but um, that's the sort of experience you do need because it is a young team we saw you know, there was a, a video doing the rounds of Aaron Ramsdale, Adam Smith having a little bit of a to-do, a bit of a tete-a-tete after one of the goals. And that will happen. Um, that, you know, that, that shows a bit, of, a bit of fight. It's not a blame culture. It's just, uh, you know, people taking responsibility, people showing they're up for the fight. So as far as it goes this week, I think these four days of the season, I really do. Um, two home games, Watford's result over Norwich suddenly has put that little bit of pressure on in the table. Um, whereas before you had the advantage of other teams slipping up and, saying, well, OK, well, Bournemouth aren't winning, but nobody else is either. So it's still only a point. Well, now it's four points. So failure to take the opportunity, even a point against Spurs, if you get it back to within three, one result, the goal difference is all sort of concertinaed up a little bit down there with teams sort of shipping three and four last weekend. So I really do think, though, that certainly a win against Spurs throws it right back open. But then other teams have got some very winnable games in the next couple as well. So there's a chance that even if Bournemouth do win against Spurs, the gap could still be four points because other teams could still get results as well. So for me, the season comes down to these these next four days, basically. Uh, we could be sitting here Sunday night, nine o'clock after the Leicester game. And for me, it'll either be on or unfortunately, it'll probably be off. Well, a huge week of games with those two fixtures. That game tomorrow against Spurs, you can listen to Chris and Willow doing live commentary on AFC BTV. And we'll be back on Sunday to preview that game against Leicester. Bye for now.